Hi everybody and welcome to the last uh, review of comic books for 2017. <laughs> Might be the last one for forever, I don't know. But it's the second to last day of the year and I thought it would be a good time to go over the comic books that I've been reading lately. I've got my comic book reading gloves on. I'm sure you all have a pair of these. Um, and also to let you know what I thought was the best series of the year and the worst series of the year. Because if I just talk about things that I like, who's going to watch this, right? Um, and other comics, too. You know, I like to take chances on comics. I, I always you know, take a chance on a comic. So I've got a big stack of uh, all new ones, actually. Um, the first one we'll talk about is the new Barbarella. Barbarella. Um, the art is really, really good. And the, what you see on the cover is kind of what you got on the inside. It reminds me of a lot of, like, um, heavy metal, humanoid kind of stuff, you know, with a little softer edge to it. It's, you know, definitely space opera. They do a good job of that. Um, and they, I think they got the character very well. What's funny about this issue in particular, though, is that she is in her spaceship and it's kind of breaking down. So she figures, oh, I'll find somebody who can give me some parts for my ship, right? But it turns out to be this whole, like, tribe, nation or whatever of people who are, like, anti-everything. Right? The very big brother. And so they basically take over her ship and take her as a prisoner and they remove her vagina. So <laughs> I don't know if that's going to play big in the in the entire story, but it was interesting that the very first issue is they're like, oh, you get captured and we remove your vagina. So the story is being written by a man. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, so yes, she's pissed. She's very angry. <laughs> Wouldn't you be? So it's going to be fun to see where that goes. Um, I'm also reading this Brilliant Trash, which I've got the first two issues of this. Um, I'm not quite sure what the story is supposed to be. Um, I guess the idea is to be kind of current with as far as like, you know, um, social media is. And it's very Instagram, very uh, Reddit, very all that, you know, like everything. Everybody's talking about everything through a social media lens. But then there's these people who are kind of being activated with power. Um, but I'm not quite sure how they get their powers, if it's drug-induced, like this cover seems to be implying, or not. Um, they haven't done a good job of clearing that up yet. Uh, I like the art in it, though, so, you know, I'll give it a, a chance. I like to give comic books a chance. Um, oh! I've been reading this, too, Evolution. Um, the basic idea here is that there's been a super speed-up in Evolution, but only a few people know it. So... <laughs> <laughs> and they're gonna, you know, kind of uh, see where it goes. Um, I don't know if this is also kind of another, you know, activating mutants kind of uh, a, a dealie as well. Like whoever's getting sped up evolution suddenly has amazing powers or not. Because um, it's only been the first issue. Um, but I like the, the concept. It's kind of interesting. I mean, evolution is supposed to be going on at all times, right? So would you know it? Uh, you know, are, are, would you know that a new, you know, larger evolution was happening or not? Um... It's, it's interesting, you know, especially if you live as long as I have. You know, <laughs> things that I used to think uh, when I was younger were going to be around for forever are no longer around. And there's a t tons of new concepts going on um, that I would have never thought anything about or even imagined. Um, so, you know, I think that's kind of where they're going with this. It's sort of like, well, would you even know it if, you know, there was some sped up evolution? Maybe we're in it and we just don't know it. Um, some comics that are still doing great for me, Scooby-Doo Team-Up, here, what, what was great about this is that the last issue, they met the Adam from DC Comics, and now they're meeting Adam Ant. So that's their little inside joke as far as that goes. Um, I didn't like this issue as much as some of the other ones. I like, you know, that they met the Adam and then they met Adam Ant. Um, but in this issue, the kids don't even solve the mystery of anything. They just let Adam Ant beat up on stuff. So that was kind of disappointing. Uh, when they've done such a great job in the past of melding like Hanna Barbera characters and Scooby Doo, you know, mythology, and the kids always, you know, um, unmasking ghosts and things like that, finding reasons for them to un unmask ghosts and stuff, and they did, just didn't do it this time. So, but I'm still on board. Penny Dreadful is still going on. If you're not reading this book, it actually is a really good continuation of the TV show. It's got a lot of the same people who were writing the show and everything like that. And um, it's basically what's been going on since the end of that show. Uh, all your favorite characters, including some new ones. Um, the art's really, really good. I, you know, if you love that show, you should be reading that comic. I got the. I've read all of Spy Seal. <laughs> Seal. 
by seal. Uh, there's only four issues. I don't think I would get another uh, of this. The artwork is fine, but it, there wasn't much of a story here. Um, they didn't do enough to establish who Spy Seal was uh, or what his world was. And the, and the resolution at the end was just sort of like, oh, and then we're all in the same place at the same time, but the person who's actually the bad person is just going to pop up and say, I'm the bad person. So that was kind of disappointing with that. Black Magic is still going on. This should be on your pull list if it's not. Uh, I'm still reading Star Wars Adventures. IDW Star Wars Adventures. This isn't as good as the Star Wars series that Marvel's doing, so I'll, I'm probably going to read maybe one more issue of this. I'll go to six issues anyways. They have these backup stories, which are for kids, which are kind of fun, and they're, they're in the Star Wars universe, but they're not with main characters. So that's kind of fun, but yeah, for everything that they're doing in the main story, it's just eh, it's not keeping my interest. Not like the, the main Star Wars series is, which is using main characters too. And there's a new Star Wars movie out, so, you know, they should be... <laughs> It ain't all cylinders, as far as I'm concerned. Um, this is the last issue of American Gods. Um, it's been a great series. Um, I think maybe I might try to read the book um, in, like, 2010. 20, I mean, 20, uh, 20 or something like that, 2010. Because I'm going to go and use a time machine. I'm going to go back in time, and I'm going to read it. Um, just because I don't think I'll get the next series, because the next series starts in, like, February or something like that. Um... It might be fun to catch up in the actual book and then go back to something like this. I mean, I loved it, but now I, 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 I don't know that I can keep reading it in comic form. I got too many comic books. To be honest with you, one of my resolutions for the new year is to see behind me. I've got all these. All of that you see behind me is my to be read section. So <laughs> my resolution for the new year is to not buy any more books, trades, or hardcovers until that's all gone. I'll still buy comic books, the floppies, but not any more of those. So, as you can see, I've got my work cut out for me. I mean, there's tons of books back here, so they need to be read. So, it's not enough time in the day. Um, Sheena is still good, although she's just kind of, but look at those boobs. Um, she's just kind of been stuck in a, a cave, uh, for like a couple of issues. I think it's time to get out of the cave and into the streets, Sheena. Um, but the art's been good and the story is, is, I like the way the story is progressing so far, so. Guess what is out? Yep, Doomsday Clock. DC has finally decided that they're gonna take the Watchmen world and do whatever they want with that. This is Jeff John's uh, chance to pretend he's Alan Moore and guess what, he's not as good. <laughs> Big surprise, right? Um, this issue is him mostly in the Watchmen world, trying to uh, draw, uh, write people like Rorschach. Um, and he just doesn't get it. He doesn't get it. The problem might be that he's too old. If there was a younger writer on this and was being more contemporary, that might be good. But he's basically just trying to rewrite the same world that Alan Moore already famously wrote in Watchmen. There's no need for these two worlds to come together. Um, but, you know, they think there's money to be made, so, and obviously I'll buy it. So, but, yeah, it's, it's a very piss poor attempt at being Alan Moore, and you don't even get to see, uh, you know, a Superman until the end, so. I am interested to see how they bring these two worlds together. I don't see that there's a need for it, you know. Sometimes you have to let a good story just be what it was, you know. Kids are going to want to read Watchmen over and over and over again. And it's not going to stop DC from putting out special editions over and over again for forever and ever and ever, you know. Just let the story be what it was. Okay. Another good series right now is Kong on the Planet of the Apes. I am loving this series. The art is so good in this. The art is so And the writing's been good. So everything's... Uh, kudos to them on everything. What I love about it is that it takes... Uh, Dr. Zaius, Cornelius, uh, and, uh, Ursus, the, you know, the bigger, uh, gorilla, and they have to go to Skull Island, basically. Uh, it's more of them going there than, uh, Kong coming to Planet of the Apes, because as I think I told you last time, a King Kong ended up on their shore, dead. They didn't know what it, what it meant. Was this a god? And if it was a god that got felled? What does that mean for them? Uh, or is it proof that, you know, Ape is, is the, you know, should be the masters of everything? What does it mean? So they decide they're going to go on a ship and they're going to find where this thing came from. Well, I can ruin it for you now because <laughs> they go to the island, Skull Island, and guess who's on Skull Island? Yep, human beings. And human beings are worshipping King Kong. 
Queen Kong ended up on their shores. It was a girl monkey who ended up on their shore who was passed, who died. Now, I don't know if King Kong knows that, that she passed away or not. Um, but it's it's been really, really good. And they just go back and forth on their mytho on their own mythology, but in a really interesting way. Um, so that's uh, definitely a, you know, should put that on your list of things to read. I got the first issue of 30 Days of Night. Going back into this world, it's very well written. I think as wrong as Niles uh, writes it, it's it's going to be good. Um, he's just, all this issue does is just establish borrows again, you know, the, the world, that the, the town that they live in, uh, you know, where there's 30 Days of Night. Um, it doesn't really go into, like, what's going to happen for this series, um, which I don't know if this is an ongoing or just six issues or 12 issues or what, but... I liked it, and the artwork was good, and, and the characterization was very, very good um, on that. So I'm giving that more chances. As I mentioned, the Star Wars series is awesome. Um, a lot of good things still going on in this. Another new series that I've been reading that I like is The Port of Earth. I don't know if anybody else has been giving this a try. Port of Earth. The basics uh, of this is which, and they even, in the first issue, they kind of tell you it, but in the second issue, they just say on the very first page, oh, here's the whole concept. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if someone complained after the first issue, I think I did, uh, that we're like, you're not, a th what is this series supposed to be about? So the second issue, the first page, they're like, okay, here's what it's all about. Basically, um, some aliens come to Earth and say, we would like to use you as sort of a stop-off place for us, you know, within the galaxy. And as payment for us to put a little port on Earth, we'll give you all kinds of amazing alien technology. And so we think, oh, this is some kind of wonderful humanitarian effort. We're going to be part of the galaxy now. Earth is finally stepping up to, you know, be part of whatever's going on in the galaxy. Well, it turns out that the people who came to build the port were just, they were just businessmen. <laughs> and so they didn't keep any of their promises, of course, about the port. Um, at first, the aliens were like, oh, we'll only use the port. We'll never leave the port. They're aliens all over now. Um, they set up a system with the military where it's sort of like, yeah, we're giving you our secret military, you know, uh, secrets and all of our alien you know, tech, tech. But you can only use it to protect us, the aliens, not human beings. So if an alien does something to a human being, you have to take the alien side, basically, is what they're, they're basically saying. And of course, aliens are starting to do stuff to human beings. So <laughs> that's uh, gonna be very interesting. It's sort of like, what do you do when you got the bad side of a deal? You know? <laughs> because, uh, and they even kind of imply, I mean, it's implied, but it has, and I'm sure it's gonna be probably within the first six issues for the first trade, but you have to love the deal. Because if you don't love the deal, it means an invasion, right? So they're giving you, they're, you know, as long as they can control you, they're willing to give you this, you know, slighted deal. But if the first time you start to complain and say, hey, we're, why are we doing all this for you? We're not getting anything out of this invasion. So I kind of think that's where that's going to go. We'll see. Um, but it's been fun to read. Um, Greg, not Greg, Gravediggers Union, and for Greg, if Greg is listening. Um, second issue of this, I told you before, I didn't care so much for the first issue because the characters in it are already established somewhere else and I didn't read that other thing. This one's a little bit better. I like this lady that they go to visit. She's sort of a, you know, mystic-y, you know, a witchy lady. And, uh, the, the basis of this is that one of the grave diggers, um, daughter has some po mystical powers where she might be a witch. And so she gets taken to this coven, um, as being, you know, the new leader of the coven. And uh, she's kind of clueless. She doesn't know, you know, why she thinks, why they think she's special, and all this stuff like that. And so, of course, her dad and the Grave Diggers Union are trying to find her. That's the basis of it. This is only the second issue, so they haven't gone too deep in it. I have to say though that the art isn't that great in that series, and that may be part of what is making it difficult for me to buy into the concept because the art is so sketchy and just it doesn't draw you in. Not at all. So, um, another one I'm reading is Falcon. I'm still reading this, and I have to be honest, it's, it's such a disappointment. Um, one of the things about it, though, is they waste a lot of time in here. Now, the art's not terrible. It's okay. But the problem is that it's not being written. In this issue alone, there's like six or seven pages that are just art, like just fights. But there's no pow, zoom, bang, no internal dialogue going on of why we're fighting the way we are. No no a talk between the Falcon and his sidekick, the Patriot, about what they're doing. Just panels of art of people fighting. 
Which is boring when half the book is, that's all it is. You know, you need to have, to communicate to us why people are doing what they're doing. Uh, it's very poorly written. So, and it's sad because I really do feel like the Falcon, uh, as far as anything with legacy goes, he has a legacy that needs to be explored. Um, and whoever this person is writing it is not exploring it. And also, to get on my house, though. <laughs> Um, they've given him too big of a of a villain. When I think of the the Falcon, um, I don't necessarily want to see him just fight inner city kind of people. I think that's cliche. But you can't give him a whole uh, litany of demons either. I mean, he's a guy with a flying suit, so you know he's got to be within the realm of possibilities of what he can take on. I know he's been an Avenger. I know he's done a ton of things. But when he's on his own, standing in the street corner. He's not taking down, you know, Mephisto, okay? So I, I think that they gave him too big of a challenge in that. And, I, you know, I'll read the first six issues, but that's about it as far as this goes. Because I've even read in the previews that, uh, oh, he's in Chicago now, but then he's going to go to New York. And the exact same thing is going to happen. So whereas in Chicago, you know, the mayor is a demon. In New York, there's all kinds of vampires. Which, again, it's like, it's the Falcon. He shouldn't be having the, uh, he's not, shouldn't be fighting vampires, you know, he should be fighting an all-new Batroc the Leaper. <laughs> or something. I don't know. But not what you're doing with them. It's, it's just it's terrible. I'll be dropping this. That's all I got to say about that. Uh, second issue of Coyotes. Um, it's okay. I'm hoping that it's going to turn on me, you know, to be better. The second issue it does this thing where everybody's very accepting of whoever the main characters are, but they're they're ready to kick ass and kill anybody who's not a main character. So while coyotes and men who turn into coyotes and girls who are kick ass ninjas are dying left and right, the main characters somehow make it through, including the cop uh, in the story who they shouldn't be trusting at this point because they hardly even know him. But no, right from the first second they're like, "Oh, you're with us. Come with us. Let's go." Um, and of course he does. Um, also, there's a little bit too much of everybody knowing everything, you know, instantly. Like, oh, I have this doll. I don't know where it's from. And then the cop goes, oh, I know exactly where these are made. Let's go to the factory. So it's a little bit kind of like, eh. So it'd be nicer if they weren't so trusting of each other. Uh, since you're trying to establish, like, there's these different fra factions who are against each other. But for some reason... The main characters aren't, so maybe they just really open people and everything, and they're just very, very nice, so. But, I'm reading it. So those are some of the comics that I'm reading. Um, you might notice I don't read a lot of DC or Marvel. Um, I have to be honest, the big two have not been that exciting to me. DC's more exciting than Marvel right now because they'll take a chance with their characters. It doesn't seem like Marvel takes chances with their characters in the comics anymore. It's it, They're just looking for their next movie, so... That's how I said it. That's how I feel. Now let's get into my favorite series of the year. Yeah, series of the year. So I'll start with my favorite mini series, and uh, you'll see what I mean when I get to the thing of the thing thing thing. Um, there were two comics that were mini series that I loved every issue of them. Um, I thought they were great concepts. And uh, I would love to see more of them, although I don't think that we will. I just, I might have been the only people, <laughs> only person who was reading these comics. So the first one is, if, you, if you've been watching any of these videos, you probably already know, it is bloop, Centipede, Centipede. So this is the last issue of Centipede, number five. There's only five issues, Atari and Dynamite, Centipede. I just... I'm in love with this series, um, and even though this final issue didn't resolve it for me, um, I mean, it leaves it open-ended enough that there could be a centipede too, if the, you know these people want to get back together again. Um, but if this gets collected, which I don't know, because like I said, I'm the only one who read it, so I don't know if that's enough. If only me reading it is enough for them to want to make a trade. But if it gets collected into a trade, please read it, because that's so much fun. It, it really is just somebody said... Here's the Centipede uh, video game. What would you do with that as a concept? And they just run with it. And one of the things that I love about it, of course, is that it's the story of the last person alive who is talking to you, the reader, as his only friend and letting you know that he is going to kill himself in a blaze of glory to take out the Centipede who has destroyed the Earth, right? 
and it has the mushrooms, and it has all the other characters um, as this person is going on his journey to do that, um, and you're going along with him. The other thing about it that's fun, again, as I mentioned, if you're, you know, GLBTQA, baby, alphabet person, is that he's gay, and one of the things that they talk about in the story is his coming out process and how his parents, you know, kind of dealt with him. So it's kind of, I mean, hello, uh, you should be, glad should be all over this. <laughs> it's a gay man who's the last man on earth, and he's going out in a blaze of glory, people. It was just awesome. Um, so when we get to the end, um, I'm not going to ruin it for you, uh, but let's just say that they leave it open and ended up enough, for me anyways, that there could be a, a second series. Um, and I would love to see more of this character and more of this world. They just really did such a good job with it. Now, the art is a little uh, sketchy. I mean, what you're seeing on the cover is kind of what the art is like in, in the book. But that kind of gives it its own personality in a way, I, I guess you could say. I can't wait to see what they do next um, with the, the Atari properties. Because Dynamite is so hit or miss. I mean, they love a property, that's for sure. But sometimes they'll just do it for, you know, shits and giggles, and other times it's, you know, they really gave it to somebody to do something with, and that's what happened in this, for instance. So Centipede. You must read Centipede. Especially, again, if you're gay, lesbian, trans, anything of like that, you must read that book. So since that one's ending, oh well. <laughs> I have a, a, another one that's just starting that, again... For my community, if you're going to read a comic and you haven't read Centipede yet until it's collected, uh, the next one for you to pick up then is the Ass Ass in in Ass Ass and So Ass Ass in Nastasis. I don't know. So IDW has got this sort of like it's called Black Crown, and it's sort of like they're I don't know creator owned or not. I'm not sure what they're doing with this, but it has the Hernandez brothers in it, and it's basically the story. And so the art is all Hernandez brothers, which alone is enough, you know, price of admission right there. But the basic story is, as you see here down in the bottom, uh, this young man here wanted to go to college, but his parent, his mother, did not have enough money for him to go to college because she used to be a kick-ass assassin, 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 assassin. This. And um, she's been trying to just do the straight and narrow, but that doesn't make the money. So he can't pay his tuition. So she says, well, let's do one last job. And then you'll have enough money for college and maybe for a couple of years after that, if you're smart, right? So <laughs> she's like, he says, okay, I will, but I'm going to bring my friend, uh, my friend Taylor. So, of course, mom assumes Taylor is a girl's name. And then, whoop, guess what? It's this Taylor. Now, I'm not sure if they're going to say that this tailor with the pink mohawk is sort of, you know, gender fluid or whatever you want to say. But right now it's sort of like they're in a relationship. Uh, Mom seems okay with it. But the thing is that she's just a, she's an assassin. So she's not used to trusting anybody with anything. And now that her, you know, son is coming out, basically, she's not sure what to do with that. Especially since she's, you know, cash poor and uh, <laughs> she needs some money fast. So uh, it was a fun first issue. And, uh, again, it's, you know, sometimes when it comes to comics that are trying to appeal to the GLBT, you know, community, they're just so heavy-handed. There's no, uh, fun in them, as far as I'm concerned. And when there's no fun, it's because there's no characterization. The character is just their sexuality. Um, for an example of that, look at the Ray in Justice League. Uh, <laughs> eh. But anywho, these two series, though, do, you know, that with a plum, and it's like these characters are gay, they have lovers, they talk about their feelings about, you know, sex and sexuality and love, and, uh, but it's not, it doesn't hit you over the head with it. It's just sort of like, that's who they are, and that's what they're dealing with. Um, and so it's more interesting to read something like that, because it seems more real life, like, oh, they're just dealing with other things, and this just has to be part of it, you know? We can't all wear long black gloves, okay? <laughs> The other miniseries that I loved, 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 that only I was reading, apparently, was Medicine, Medicine. So this resolved very well for me, and uh, they did a good job of making sure that, you know, there could be another series if anybody else wants to pick up the trade. Um, again, it's from Action Lab, so I don't know if Action Lab even does trades or not. I don't know if anybody else was reading this. This is an example of where the art is sketchy, but the story is so strong, I don't even care about the art. I mean, I care, but I don't care. Um, 
And it's the story, if you haven't been watching my videos, of a group of doctors who are sort of like Doctors Without Borders, but their border is that they don't help superheroes get better, they help villains get better. Um, and there's a whole reason why, and there's a whole reason uh, uh, why the different Doctors are chosen, and they've got a lot of different uh, uh, personalities, a lot of different characters, you get to see a lot of the different villains as well. Um, they did just a lot of world build building in this that it makes it hard for me to believe, um, you know, that it's going away and you're not going to see this world anymore. There's only six issues. Um, they did such a good job with this. Um, so there's a lot more that could be told. Will it be told? I don't know. I mean, I would be on board with this one um, if they did single issues again. I would I would get it. I mean, that's how good I thought they did a, a job of this. And it was just so interesting and funny. A little gross. I mean, I guess Action Lab doesn't med mind like blood and gore and stuff like that. So, um, you know, they're not Avatar, but they're... <laughs> But they, they, you know, they'll let guts show, and and there were there was a a, a couple of uh, plot points in the series uh, as far as one girl getting raped and another girl um, having a baby out of wedlock and all this kind of stuff like that, which, you know, uh, but it it didn't ruin the series, uh, and the characters themselves uh, got some redemption as well. Although you know the thing about those kind of plot points is sort of like, um. Even when it's things that we don't want to talk about, we have already socially accepted that there's certain outcomes that should come from these things, right? Um, if you, if socially or morally, we think that one person is a certain way, we then have to, their resolution has to be they go to jail or they should die or whatever, you know? Um, so it's interesting to see somebody play with some of that as a, as a plot point and the resolution isn't necessarily what's socially or morally uh, the expectation for it, you know? It's sort of like, um, I mean, isn't that the, the fun sometimes when you read a comic book where, you know, we think it's black and white, there's heroes and there's villains, and therefore if you're a villain, you must be a bad person. Um, but we find that some of the best villains are people who are, uh, you know, vil uh, villains of circumstance in a sense, you know, it's sort of like there's a reason why they did, they chose what they chose. That makes the best villains. If there's a motivation behind what they chose what they chose. And I think it's even more interesting when um, somebody is a villain and they chose what they chose and it's something that doesn't stand up to societal or moral uh, restrictions. And that's the only reason why they're quote unquote, the bad person. Um, because who hasn't made choices that aren't necessarily <laughs> the choices that, uh, I chose these gloves, okay? Um, I just, that's, that's me. So, before I give you my series of the, of the year for 2017, I will show you a little bit of the series that I think is the worst of the year. Um, I won't be getting any more of this comic, that's for sure. Um, and it's just a major disappointment because it's a character that I think is do some love, but the people who are writing this and doing the art for this apparently have no understanding of this person, this icon, this, this, uh, you know, character. And it's the awful Petty, Betty Page comic, um, by Dynamite, which is how ironic is that? So, <laughs> going back to what I was saying earlier, they love a property. Somebody sold them Betty Page, apparently, so they could do comics. This is just a comic so that they can have 20 different incentive covers, which is fine and well. Um, but even still, everything on the inside is so horrible. It's painful to read. Um, it, it, I thought when I when this was coming out, I thought, oh, it, if it's cheesecake-y and, and, and just a little kind of, you know, that's that's fun. And that'll be... But what they're trying to do here is they want to write some alternate history for Betty Page. And they do such a terrible job of it because uh, the idea is that she's a super spy and that she kind of stumbles into things. The, uh, they don't write her as necessarily very intelligent, but she's not dumb or cutesy dumb or even cheesecake dumb. Um, she's just stumbling literally from one situation to the next and it all keeps working out for her, but not even in a fun way. And there's so many opportunities for that to happen that would elevate this book, you know. Um, 
it just shows no understanding of who, who Betty Page is as as the icon that she is. They want to write their own story of it, and the story they have in mind is crap. So, and then, and the inside, I mean, the covers, of course, it's, you know, 20,000 different incentive covers. Um, although, listener draws every woman the same. They all look, proportions the same. This is his idealized woman, I suppose, but it's just sort of like, girl, enough, okay? Um, usually in the same positions and stuff like that. I'm sure if, if you looked, you know, through his catalog, he'd probably be somebody else sitting on a chest in some, you know, previous incarnation of whatever. But the other, the thing that gets me the, the most about this, other than that it shows a lack of understanding of this icon, is that um, they don't even draw her right on the inside of the book. I don't even want to show you how terrible it looks, but, you know, I would hate for anybody to reduce Betty to just this, but they don't even get that right, her bangs right. Um, she's drawn with just any whatever kind of hair, because the artist is terrible, and um, any kind of whatever outfit, you know. Um... They don't even try to play up the cheesecake fact, uh, cheesecake factory. I'm just hungry. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> the cheesecake factor of what this series should be. You know, there's a way to do this and play with that and honor her as an icon without. I mean, it's. I don't know. Are these uh, are these people trying to be feminists or something like that? And so in their attempt to be ultra feminists, they're sort of like, well, we can't write her as, you know, the person that we all know and love. We have to write her as some sort of, like, goofy spy character. So enough said about that. I don't ever want to mention that series again. It's horrible. And Dynamite should just stop with these people. They don't know what they're doing. Let it go for a year. And then next year, invite me to come and write the series for you. So there we go. Only I can do justice to betting. So, I mean, not only me, but someone who cares at least, okay? All right, let's cleanse ourselves. <sighs> oh. Okay. So, at my series of 2017, the one that I have enjoyed the most, um, I guess, in honesty, it's a maxi series. But... I hope it's not. I hope that they come through their senses and realize that they've created such a vibrant world that this needs to be an ongoing. It seriously needs to be an ongoing. Um, and by the same creators and the same people, don't try to have this world with somebody else because then you'll end up with a Betty Page. No. <laughs> it is extremity, 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 extremity. If you've been watching any of my videos, you know that I've been cuckooing about this. Every issue. And it's, it's because it really is my must-read. It's the top of the pile, this one first, of everything. Uh, Daniel Warren Johnson did, has done such a great job of creating this world. It's so interesting. It's got, it's like Mad Max meets, um, just, it's just wonderful. And the art is superior. Um, there's always these great splash pages of stuff. Um, the basic story, if you haven't been reading, watching my videos, is that there's this young artist who has her hand chopped off, her hand chopped off, her drawing hand basically, chopped off because her family and tribe are warring with another family and tribe. Um, and so the idea is, who would you be if you didn't have the one thing that made you special? In her uh, tribe, they have a, a ritual that they go through in which one of the elders names you. And as they name you, they're saying, I see in you X, Y, and Z. And so they said to her, I see in you the artist. Well, how can you be an artist if you can't, you know, you don't have the hands to create that? So she's got to find a way to survive in this very uh, warlike structure. Uh, and she does. And she has a brother, and there's other characters, and there's a robot person named Shiloh, which if you were reading this, you'd know he's pretty awesome. And uh, they've actually used him for a lot of uh, some really cool emotional beats. Um, so there's even a time when I thought he was going to die. So, <laughs> And he's a robot, but I cared. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, that, that's, that to me, that's good writing. Um, this is issue 9, so it's, they said it's only going to go to 12 issues, but oh my god, if I can make an appeal to these people, that just take six months off or something, maybe come back in like, hmm, 2019 or something with Extremity 2, Electric Boogaloo, um, it's just such a great world that you've created, I, I don't know why you would leave it, um, I would definitely follow this artist, uh, and writer to another project, but if it ends up not being as good, oh, 
You're going to hear about it. Okay? Because <laughs> you could be wasting my time with this, not wasting my time with that. So those are the comics that I've been reading lately. Those are my favorites of the year. Uh, if you've been reading any of them, I'd love to hear your opinion about them. Because as I mentioned, I seem to be noticing that a lot of what I read, um, nobody else is reading. So I don't get to talk about comics with anybody ever. So I talk to you, the faceless void that is YouTube. So, you know, this is what it sounds like when doves cry. 